Oh, so they do you're confusing me. Can you guys talk to that guy or someone in the house? With Good evening and welcome to the September 3rd Tuesday Town Council meeting. Um, we are going to, before we start, we're going to, I would ask for a moment of silence for former Fire Chief Tom Watson. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Martino, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councilor Breton. Here. Councilor Torres. Present. Councilor Hurley is unable to attend. Councilor Latina. Here. Councilor Lester. Here. Councilor Rell. Here. Councilor Spinella. Here. Deputy Mayor Martino. Here. And Mayor Morin Bello. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a proclamation for Welcome Week. Uh, there's nobody here for it, but I'll, I'll read it um, quickly. Whereas since our nation's founding, American prosperity has been fueled by the recognition that we are stronger as a nation when we work together as a people. Our nation, state, and town's success has always been the product of our unique capacity to welcome the contributions and spirit of entrepreneurship of all people, immigrants and native-born who seek to achieve the American dream. And whereas regardless of race, gender, religion, or country of origin, we are joined in the values of hard work and shared opportunity that define us as residents of Wethersfield and as a nation of immigrants. Whereas at no time in our country's history has the need to work together been more necessary, and it is important that we join our community in a spirit of welcoming to embrace the talents and contributions of all residents. And whereas in a 21st century economy, we must create communities that leverage the full potential of all who live here. We should capitalize on diverse perspectives, cultures, and talents as the most valuable asset in an economy where knowledge, creativity, and innovation reap the greatest benefits. And becoming a more welcoming community means more customers for local businesses, more jobs created by entrepreneurs, and an economy that benefits us all. And whereas by recognizing the contributions that we all make to creating a vibrant culture and a growing economy, we make our community more welcoming to all who call it home. And whereas we honor the spirit of unity that is bringing together neighbors in Wethersfield during National Welcoming Week, I invite all residents to join the movement by making a commitment to core American values and by taking action in the spirit of welcoming. Now, therefore, I, Amy Morinbello, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, do hereby proclaim the week of September 13th through the 20th, 2019, as Welcoming Week and call upon residents of Wethersfield to join together to build a stronger community. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this third day of September 2019. Thank you. Um, next, we move into public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak this evening? Seeing none, declaring public comment closed. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Come on up, Mr. Mazzarella. <laughs> You're already down to four minutes and 28 seconds. <laughs> Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I rarely give up an opportunity to speak. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about sidewalks. You know, I walk a lot. I stub my toe a lot. I trip on damaged sidewalks. A few uh, meetings ago, I mentioned the possibility of considering uh, <clears throat> where the town would participate in some replacement of sidewalks like other towns do. I mentioned Rocky Hill, which I think does all this, takes care of all the sidewalks. And uh, New Britain introduced a program where they would uh, do some kind of cost sharing for the residents to replace the sidewalks. Here in Wethersfield, the residents are responsible for the sidewalks. Uh, recently, I believe we got a grant, can't recall 
what kind of grant it was. I hope it's a private grant for replacement of uh, some sidewalks. And we did some work down in Old Weathersfield on the pavers. And uh, we did some uh, handicap accessible ramp work around town and some other adjacent sidewalks that in those in those areas where the improvements were being made. <clears throat> and uh, I had a thought about trying to incorporate repair of sidewalks when we do a full, what I call a full reclamation of a street. Uh, the town recently completed a small section of road on Brimfield, which goes between Walcott Hill and Longview. Um, it's a rather short road, in my opinion. <clears throat> I wasn't able to get the cost of that road uh, tonight before the meeting, but uh, I did my uh, Tom Mazzarella sidewalk inspection. Um, I came up with uh, just under 100 slabs need to be replaced on that street. <clears throat> and I, I estimated there's 540 sidewalk slabs on that section. So we're talking about less than 20% of the sidewalks need to be replaced uh, due to damage. Uh, on that street, uh, we reclaimed the, the street. As Derek mentioned, it's not a good example because they had problems with the base. So the job got a little bit more involved than we anticipated. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it was a full excavation of the, of the base, uh, repaved it. 100% of the curbs were replaced. 100% of the driveway aprons were replaced. Um, topsoil and seeded on uh, both sides of the street. Looks very nice, but the sidewalks are in pretty sad condition. So maybe we could consider evaluating a street job like that in the future and incorporating uh, repair of the sidewalks. I think that if the town were to go out and get a bid to replace sidewalks during that type of heavy construction, and you're talking about a hundred sidewalks, I, I think they would get a better price. I would, I would guess they would get a better price than if the individual homeowners were going out and getting one or two sidewalks replaced as they went along. So it's just something to think about. I know it's a, it's a lot of money to be spending, but. Uh, I feel strongly that uh, Weathersfield should be spending more money on infrastructure where a large percentage of the population uses the roads and the sidewalks and things like that. So uh, I'd like to see some of those costs be spread around in all different areas of town. Now, I happen to uh, leave my house on Walker Hill Road, so I, I venture out two and a half, three miles to make sure I can come back within another three miles. But when you go to some parts of town uh, up in uh, uh, Highland Street, uh, uh, Collier, Golf Road, uh, streets like that, they're, they're newer developments. And there's long stretches where there's nothing wrong with the sidewalks at all. You get into Old Weathersfield and Old New Weathersfield. <laughs> There's a lot of deterioration, so just something that you might want to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Colantonio, do you want to speak tonight? Okay. So we declare public um, comments closed. We have no hearings on ordinances or resolutions. We have no presentations. I'll ask council members if you have any reports. Any council members have reports? Councilor Forrest. Not so much a report, but just um, at the last council meeting, uh, there was a, a note about uh, some dips in the road on the Salstein Highway, which it's not to say I confirmed them more than I just ran over them. Uh, but there are definitely some dips in front of the old Pelton's area there, and also some of the reconstruction that we were doing on Main Street to raise the um, manhole covers to be the similar uh, height of the street. There was one or two that still is not been raised, and that's just giving that information to the town manager. And as a general statement, as town staff go around, or maybe it's the councilors go around, if we see something that's from an infrastructure out of place, uh, just to mention it to you so you can take care of it. And I think um, Mr. Colantonio had mentioned the Silestine down closer to the Hartford line where you come off the, the on-ramp there. Um, 
by O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I think it's O'Reilly's Auto Parts down in that area too. And I know that's a state highway, but maybe we can get in touch with someone from the state on that. The section um, I was talking about was just the recently redone yeah, section the, in the last six, seven yeah. months. So it's it shouldn't be dipping in seven sure. months. Councilor Rell? Just as a follow-up to, to that, in front of the old Rite Aid and just a little bit further north on that, if you're heading north, the left, furthest left north lane, there are a couple. Is that the one? I Same think that's ones. what he's talking about. You hit him too, huh? Well, yeah. well, I thought you said Peltons. <laughs> the old Peltons. Oh, the, the old Peltons, Peltons. Peltons. Right Sorry, I'm going Which back. is the old Right Aid. <laughs> Which is the yes. old Right Aid. The gotcha. Yeah, okay. Place, so. I, I had only heard the Peltons. Sorry. So now we're talking about infrastructure from the public, you know, talk about it at the council. Okay. Thank you. You got a few? Councilor Breton? Yeah. I have um, so um, the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee uh, met on the 29th of August and um, you know, that whole purpose of that committee is to make the um, Weathersfield a bike and pedestrian friendly community. And so in light of Mr. Mazzarella's comments, um, the plans, you know, they're reviewing the draft plan now and they're getting into the specifics and Derek's part of that effort too. Um, your comments are, you know, something that I can bring back. Um, I know that there were a lot of identified, um, there were a lot of workshops and people identified different areas of the town where we could do improvements or, it all comes down to obviously funding and money and I don't know that we contemplated necessarily the town doing some cost share there but um, but it's definitely something that we can bring um, but they're currently going through and drafting the plan coming up um, also looking at existing plans that we had in on the books that were never implemented um, to incorporate ultimately how we can make it better for the pedestrians and for bicyclists um, and the cool the other thing I wanted to report was um, there's uh, the bike repair station is now on Google Maps. So if you Google bike repair station and you're in this area right here, you'll, you'll find it, it'll come up. So that's pretty cool, like we made it. <laughs> um, but at any rate, the, you know, the next meeting is on the 26th of September um, and people are welcome to come and provide their comments too um, and ideas still. Thank you. Uh, anything else from councilors? Councilor Latina. I just wanted to indulge everybody tonight that might be here or watching. Um, we just want to send some well wishes. Uh, Council member uh, Mike Curley is going in for a major operation tomorrow, and I know that he would really love all of our prayers and support. Um, so if you could have him in your thoughts tonight, that would be great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and finally, I just have some uh, announcements. This Saturday is the Winton Keen Bittner Soccer Jamboree at uh, the high school at 10 a.m. Um, Sunday, September 8th, is the 9-11 Family Picnic of Remembrance on the Broad Street Green. And then we have the Corn Fest coming up on Saturday, September 21st. Um, and the St. Patrick's Day Parade, there's a St. Patrick's Day Parade funder, fundraiser coming up on September 26th. I think those were all the um, announcements of upcoming events that I had. Um, town manager, do you have anything to report? Not at this time. Okay, very good. So we're going to move on. Um, we have no discussion items this evening. We'll move into council action. Um, we have no workshop items for referral. There are some um, paving bids we're going to act on tonight because they're time sensitive and we did not want to wait for the next council meeting. So we'll start with the fall paving program. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to improve the increase of PO 20176880 by 460,000 based on the aforementioned state awarded contract with Tilcon Connecticut and Company Incorporated. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, and I see Derek, thank you for being here. Are you going to, will you provide some information on this? Yes. Very good. Um, thank you for having me tonight. I know it's a workshop meeting, but uh, as you mentioned, it is uh, time sensitive given the time of year we're in currently. Um, as you may have remembered when we spoke, uh, I think in the spring, we put off uh, this program a little bit later than usual because we were trying to wait until MDC had finished up their Golf Brook project down at the uh, southeast end of town. Um, they are scheduled to finish up uh, this month. Um, in addition to that, there's a couple other things going on down there. Uh, the Borden is under development, uh, which is using Mill Street quite a bit, um, which is one of the roads on our list. 
as well as uh, we got a call today from uh, Marshall's Plaza saying that they're thinking about paving their parking lot this fall. Um, so with those things and where we are in schedule, we had a meeting today with our contractors. I just want to make you aware that we, we are going to have to delay Mill Street uh, until next year, um, understanding that it's in pretty poor shape, um, as it has been for a while. So uh, our intent is to do similar to what we did on Charter Road last year. We're going to put a small skim coat down, um, which will get us through the winter without having problems um, with the intention of coming back um, next year and, and doing the work. I'm just concerned. I don't want to pave the road with these uh, projects going on where we could damage the new surface. Um, so I think by next year, um, hopefully the parking lot's paved, the board in should be done, uh, MDC will be well out of the way, and I think we'll, we'll do it at that time. So um, I do have that on a list, but that is going to be moved back. Um, the other thing I just wanted to know is uh, Executive Square is also on the list. Um, we are going to try and do it, but depending on how the scheduling goes, it's very hard to get the contractors here this time of year. Um, they're going to be starting in late September, so if Charter Road goes pretty quickly, um, we'll try and get Executive Square done, but that's another one that we might have to just uh, run through the winter and, and do it next year. Um, uh, we were being pretty aggressive with this program and just kind of where we are with scheduling. Um, we have some, some changes we have to make. Uh, just in general, as you know, we do work off the state contracts for our milling and paving programs. Um, this is a request to increase TOCON's paving PO, uh, $460,000 to cover the work that is outlined here. Um, as I mentioned, some of that may not be done, particularly Mill Street. So um, with the approval tonight, we would issue, I'm going to get revised quotes from the contractor so we know where the costs are going to be. It's going to be less because we're not going to do Mill Street. So we would just issue POs up to the amount of the work that we're going to be doing and not the full amount. Um, I did want to mention we had spoken in the past about MDC and their work. Um, we had them not finish some of the road restoration work because we were going to come in and do the work anyway. So we worked out uh, payment in lieu of with them. They're going to be giving the town $128,000, uh, $128,500 um, this fall, which is what we had negotiated with them as work they didn't have to spend as part of their contract, which is going to go directly into our road fund. Um, we get pretty good rates going off the state, so that money will, will go a good, good distance in getting the work done uh, down in that area of town. So may I interrupt for a minute? Uh, should we amend our motion to say up to 460 if we believe it's coming in less? Yeah, that would be probably the safest way. So it's a not to exceed or it's up to that amount with the concept that when all is said and done, the, the rate should be lower. Right. If we're taking Mill Street off for sure yep. and the possibility of taking Executive Square off, it would seem appropriate to do. Yeah, I would do. Up to or. Yeah, I mean, I, I would do, yeah. Not to exceed is fine too. Either one up to 460000 Because as we're learning as we go through the roads, some of them have deeper issues that need to be addressed, like Brimfield, as you said. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't reduce the dollar amount. I would go up to the amount that is being requested. Are we anticipating it's, it would go over if we had kept Mill Street and Executive Square in the mix? I don't think so, no. no. Deputy Mayor? Just a comment. Uh, this paving money, it goes into a CIP code uh, strictly for paving, and if it's not used in the current year, it automatically gets carried over to the next year the to next be used. Break. So to give the full amount is not a problem. I don't think we need to change it to not to exceed. Just put the money in there if they don't use it this year. It stays in that code to be used next year with whatever is added then. Correct. Yeah, these are tax levy funds, so it's specific to road improvement. <clears throat> okay, so we can keep it as, as is, the motion as is? Okay. Counselor. Thank you, Mayor. Derek, so do the residents know yet which streets we're going to do? I know we don't release that much ahead of time, but this is obviously part of the agenda. And I know the Mill Street residents have gone through a lot over the last couple of years, and I don't know what the notification plan. Yes. Uh, typically, we hold off on notifying the public. We send out letters to all the abutters on the streets after we get town council approval. So we have those all ready to go out tomorrow. Um, my intention with that is the, the residents on Mill Street are going to get a letter because our letter, it kind of explains given that these projects are going on and where we are in the season that we are going to delay till next year, but we are going to provide 
um, some paving out there, a limited amount of paving just to get through the winter to, so they're aware of it. Um, I know I've spoken to a number of them myself. I've spoken to residents on Middletown Avenue and some of those side streets. We are going to do the Mill and Overland Middletown, so that section of the project will get done. It's just Mill Street I want to hold off until we, we know the heavy construction is done. So their letters, the, the letter to them is going to say that the, the overlay is going to be done, but the rest is going to be put off till next year? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Councilor Latina. You had mentioned Executive Square, so is that going to be the same for them? Were they thinking they were getting some sort of paving? Um, I had been talking with the owner of the hotel and the new daycare uh, about that because we were trying to schedule because they've been doing a lot of heavy construction too and we were kind of waiting for them to be done. They're about finishing up now. Um, I just sent them an email today to notify them that that is going to be uh, a maybe for this year. Um, if we do end up having to hold it off, we'll, we'll do, I don't, I'm, I'm not planning to do a full skim coat, but we are going to go out and do some road repairs just to make sure they can get through the winter until next year. So as far as we know, the folks in Executive Square don't think that they're getting a new parking lot. I have not, oh, uh, new, new road? No, I haven't, new road. I haven't spoken to, uh, to, I don't believe I've spoken to anybody out in that neighborhood, so no, I mean, usually they get the notification after you make the approval and then we let them know what roads we're doing. Okay, as long as there's communication, because that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, there, the letter also states that, that, what I explained to you, that that is going to be determined in October once we see how quickly the rest of the work progresses. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have the milling reclaiming. Do I have a motion for that? Yes, Mayor. I move to increase the purchase order 20176879 by 155000 based on the aforementioned state awarded contract with Tilcon, Connecticut, Inc. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. Right okay. Uh, similar to the paving program, we work off the state bids for our milling contracts. Um, the total cost request is $115,000 um, for Tilcon to come in and do. Uh, mill and overlay work and also uh, reclamation work related to the roads that we're going to be reconstructing uh, this year that are identified as the reclaim. So did we did we make that motion correct, Dolores? Did we say 115 or 155? I thought we said 155. I said yeah. 155. Is okay. 115 the right number? It, 115 is the right number, Derek? Yes. Okay, so we do need to... Um, to <laughs> amend this motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, do I have an amendment to make this motion uh, 115? You do. Okay. And do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the amended of the amended motion? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, do did you have other count? I'm sorry, I cut you off. Did you want to continue on this? Uh, I had no other okay. comments. Let's just Any questions? questions? <laughs> all right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or opposition? Okay, very good. Thank you. One more. Do we have a motion for miscellaneous paving prep? Motion to increase PO 20176881 by $525,000 based on the previously awarded contract with General Paving. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Comments? Um, yes, uh, as you're aware, General Paving has an on-call contract with the town. Uh, they support our paving program by working with TOCON and town staff on uh, doing drainage curbs, aprons, um, and, and other work. Uh, this particular year is a little higher than most. Um, part of the reason for that is we're doing, uh, we're planning to reclaim Charter Road, it's a pretty big road. Normally, town staff has trucks out there and some equipment to help take out some of the excess material. When we do a reclaim, we've got to take some material out. So when we put the pavement back, we end up at the same elevation or the same road surface uh, grades. Um, because of the fact our staff is, is busy and, uh, and we have such a large program this year, uh, we're going to have general paving providing some trucks and loaders um, in lieu of our staff, uh, in this case, because of the size of the program. It also, one thing we've implemented, you mentioned Brimfield Road. We did reclaim that road this past spring we found that we got into some clay and silt 
and it was unsuitable material. The road was you know, moving up and down as vehicles were driving on it. So we ended up having to do more extensive repair kind of on the fly uh, during the program. So one thing we've implemented is we, for these roads and future roads, we go out and we're doing soil borings ahead of time. So we get an idea of not only the pavement thickness, but what kind of base material we have below um, so we can plan ahead. Um, in this case, Bunce Road is one of those roads that we have a very similar consistency to what's, what Brimfield Road had. Um, you know, it's right across the streets in the same neighborhood. Seems like a lot of silt, a lot of clay. Um, we're going to do some test pits to verify that this week, but this uh, request includes uh, some money for general paving to go in and do what they did on Brimfield Road, which is to dig out some of the unsuitable material, put down a geotextile fabric, and then put a base material down before we have Tilcon come in and do the paving. Um, so just to, just to let you know, we are trying to be more proactive with that, so we're aware of it. Um, that's why it's a little bit higher. Uh, as far as a request. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Any questions from councilors? Councilor Rell. Thank you, Derek. Uh, I just had a question. It mentions Longview Drive in this uh, line or this item. Uh, what's the plan for Longview? I guess this is the from Wells Road to almost to Prospect, correct? Yes, there's been some uh, discussions about vehicle speed, sight lines, uh, stop sign requests. Um, mm -hmm. We've been working with the police department on that the last few months, uh, looking at a couple of the intersections, one being Stillwold and Longview, there's definitely a sight line issue. Uh, some of that is caused by the geometry of the intersection. Um, some of that is caused by bushes that are present on private property. Um, so I've been in discussions with that owner of the corner property. Um, we're working it out. Uh, she's willing to have the, the bushes removed that are causing the sight line issue. What this work identified in here is to realign the intersection. So we're we're, we're moving the road over on one side and we're narrowing it up on the other side to, to kind of better align the intersection. That allows vehicles in Stillwald to be able to pull up further and see further up the road. Um, by doing that, we, we can achieve the required sight line distances that we should have out there. Um, in addition to that, we're doing some improvements at the intersection of Wells and Longview. Um, if you're familiar with the intersection, it's very wide open. Um, people have complained, and I've seen a lot of vehicles coming eastbound on Wells will take that turn very fast because it's like an on-ramp and shoot down the street. So we're going to just tighten up that radius to make it more like a normal, normal road intersection where you have to come up and take a right turn. might help with some of the vehicle speeds, particularly coming down to Stillwell Drive. So there is about $20,000 in this for them to do some of those improvements. Um, it's going to require a little bit of sidewalk work that we'll have our sidewalk contractor do. Um, but the intent here was uh, we can achieve what we're looking for by engineering out the problem rather than just installing a stop sign. So that's the intent for this intersection, um, these two intersections, to help address that problem. Is there anything that's maybe for the police, um, is there anything to mitigate the speed at all on Longview? Uh, um, I know it's probably not something, you know, engineering gets involved in unless we decide to put a you know a speed hump in there or something like that but yes we, uh, well, just 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 narrowing intersections and realigning roads all go to that point yeah i think that will help with yeah. the speed um you know as far as i know there's been some concerns uh, further south on longview yeah from an engineering perspective there's only so much we can do i think at this particular intersection some it, it is not laid out properly which is causing a lot of this problem uh, I think once we realign the intersection, make the changes at Wells, and remove these uh, bushes on the private property, I think that will address address the issue at least at that location. As mm -hmm. far as speeds down it, yeah, police department is aware of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they have different things they can do. I know Gary's been in touch with them about it. Yeah, I've, I've had a number of conversations with the police department, um, and they're looking at um, different ways to address the speed um, on that street. Uh, a further conversation with, it, which is exactly um, as Derek looks to engineer some of the problems, some of the potential for accidents, the conversation with the um, police department is, so will that straightening cause an, an increase in speed? So yeah. uh, they are looking to put up the system which measures speed um, as well as the signal. And I think, don't quote me on this, about a year and a half ago they did that already. They found that 85% uh, of the traffic flowed at the correct speed or within five miles per hour. So they're going to do it again to test. And based off of um, those changes, they'll, they'll basically manage the er area and try to manage the problem um, correctly. And so a decision will be made at that point based off of the information that they collect. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, anything else? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Uh, next, we are moving back into public comment. Any members of the public have a comment to make? Come on up, Mr. Colantonio. It's a good segue right into Morrison Avenue. I don't know what he's going to talk about. No. Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. And by the way, uh, the dips that I, the dips that I. Uh, Noted, I guess, you know, a couple of meetings ago, that's uh, it's right, right here. It is on a left lane in the northbound direction. There is two of them. But I'm glad that you guys uh, have uh, enough interest to go and check it out. It was good. Uh, going back basically to, to the off ramp or uh, on the town line between Hartford and Wethersfield. Wethersfield Avenue, it's one lane one lane, and then it goes into Wethersfield. And all of a sudden, you can take a left. The town engineer is right here now, and uh, you can take a right to get on, on the on-ramp for Route 15. And then there are two lanes going straight, which as you go in southbound, the off-ramp from Route 15 has to merge with these two lanes. Now, the question that I raised probably a year or two ago that's crazy. Hartford has done some work without really regarding the consequences in Wethersfield. And I asked the question, why does the ramp has to yield? Where is all this traffic coming from? The off-ramp from Route 5 and 15 there, it seems, it seems there is much more traffic there than on those two lanes. And I suggested probably that as soon as you approach uh, Wethersfield, you know, it should have one lane to go to Hartford Avenue, one lane to go on the on-ramp, and then one lane to keep on going to Silas Dean and combine with the off-ramp, creating two. But anyway, so in your spare time, you can take a look at it and see what you think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still have three minutes. <laughs> Uh, we did we did talk about basically Morrison Avenue and uh, and I saw those people taking. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen now, and I'm really surprised that uh, I hear about long view. This is the first time that I hear about speeding, or lack of a stop sign, and it is like you know. And you guys are trying to address the problem. I've been here for the past ten years about Morrison Avenue, and nothing has been done. But at least the. The town manager realizes that there is a problem on Tifton and Morrison, right? At least that's what uh, I was told in the meeting. So uh, there is a solution probably to make uh, uh, Morrison Avenue a little bit narrower. So the people coming out of Tifton can come a little bit more into Morrison Avenue and they can see a little bit more up Morrison Avenue to meet the intersectional side distance that's required for 25 miles per hour, because right now it doesn't meet. And the 85th percentile on the street, well, when they counted before, was 31 miles per hour. The posted speed is 25, so. But I'm sure that right now, do you have the results yet of the, the new counts that you guys have made? Uh, oh, you haven't reviewed them? That's okay, thank you. What else? About the sidewalks. More than once I mentioned about uh, orchard, the bushes on a sidewalk. Nothing's getting done. I don't know why. Every once in a while I mention some things and you know, probably, how many people do, do come right here to, to participate in these town council meetings? Not too many. And whenever I ask them, says, why don't you come? Why don't you get involved? And the answer is, because they don't listen. Why waste my time? I think we should try to, to change the mentality of the people. We should all work together. We should communicate, because after all, my philosophy is this. Communication is the key to the success of everything we do. The last thing, I read, uh, I was reading the Red Reminder. I, th I think this is sad in a way, but 
And he says that uh, you closed on the, the Kisha farm, which is good. $2.4 million, which is good. 44% of the people in Wethersfield voted against it. You know, we have to borrow money to pay for that. But, uh, and I mentioned before too, to me, it's not how much it cost, but we have removed a source of income for the town of Wethersfield forever. You could have put 20 lots there in the future, they could have generated four, five hundred thousand dollars a year worth of taxes, and we have not done that. But the sad part is that you know that the town is looking for input from the residents to see what we can do with that open space. Personally, I will never buy something if I don't have the need for it yet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Are you speaking this evening? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. Just a couple of uh, additions to uh, what Derek was talking about on Longview. That's that's my neighborhood. My uh, I grew up on Beverly, and I live right off of Stowold. So, <clears throat> a couple of the issues that that I have that uh, some of the neighbors went around and took a petition and wanted to get something done about the speed and traffic on Longview. <clears throat> um, my main observation is that we need to increase the enforcement of the traffic. There are countless numbers of people that run the stop sign on Coleman Road. So from, from Wells Road, there's, there's not a stop sign until Beverly. So the, you have Chamberlain, Coleman, and Stowold without stop signs. Uh, Coleman is the first uh, through street when you're coming off of Silestine Highway heading north. It also has a convenient turn lane, so everybody opts for Coleman Road. <clears throat> they fly up that street, they go right through that stop sign. I don't know how many times, it, you know, you kind of approach it with caution, and you, you just get a sense that there's no way this guy's going to stop and fly right by. Um, there is a, a number of high-speed, I'll call them repeat offenders, because you can almost recognize the cars. They're heading towards Prospect in that area. And uh, I just think you need to have a, a vehicle placed there, a, a patrol car, and start handing out tickets. You know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of traffic laws in town that just don't get enforced. Now, Maybe they're too busy. I don't. Know. I don't know, but it's a large population just doesn't obey the traffic signs. And uh, yeah, you can realign the street, and that's going to help. But you know, hit them in the pocketbook, and you know, start paying fines for speeding. Uh, noise is a big issue with me on Longview. There's, I don't know what happened to noise laws. It used to be that if you modified a vehicle, took the muffler off or whatever, you would get pulled over and you'd get a ticket for noise, operating a motor vehicle with a defective equipment. I don't see anybody stopping anybody for that. Um, another item is uh, uh, we're starting to see more signs go up that say no through trucks. It's a gr great idea. I see one at Prospect on uh, Prospect and Walcott Hill. I assume there's one in the other direction. I, I, I don't know how they would even enforce that. What is a police officer supposed to do? See a truck turn down there and follow him until he gets to Harford? And say, hey, <laughs> that's a through truck violation. So I don't know how that works. Uh, another point I wanted to make is on... Uh, on Wells Road, when you're heading uh, west and you're going to turn to Longview, there, that's a state road, there's a turn lane there. Well, I drive a mid-sized pickup truck. It's not an overly large vehicle. There is not enough room for me to pull my truck in that turn lane without the right rear corner sticking into the traffic. And when I was commuting home from work at rush hour, I don't know how many times I almost got rear-ended there. 
So I think there needs to be some adjustment on the, on the state traffic uh, painting of the lines there. There's just not enough room. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the reasoning was. They're trying to prevent people from stacking up to turn on uh, uh, left on uh, Walcott Hill, I guess. So just, uh, I don't know if you can convey it to the, to the police department that you know, we want to step up the enforcement. And it's not just Longview, it's a lot of areas in town. It's but, everywhere uh, in town. You know, I don't know how you go about that unless it comes from you people and you say, come on, this is what we want, this is what we need. What's the sense of putting all these traffic signs up? They're all over the place and no one's paying any attention to them. And you know, hopefully not too many people are gonna get seriously injured, but let's slow everything down. There's, there's no need for it. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay, seeing no one else who'd like to speak tonight, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion to go into executive session. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Have a good night.